Namibia, uh, we're going to be in Botswana. From Botswana, we're going to be in Zambia. From Zambia, we are going to be in your house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now listen, the Bible says, in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4, the Bible says, it's the Lord who gave some to be prophets, some to be apostles, and some to be prophets. Now, the Bible says it is the Lord who gave some. They did not give themselves. It is the Lord who gave them titles. You see, they are self-proclaimed apostles. And they are called apostles. But at this man of God, I've watched him for some years. And that's the reason I brought him for my sons and daughters. So that you can be blessed. He is an apostle. I have approved his grace. I have watched how he has been moving with the Lord. I've watched carefully his life and I've personally seen that he's a man of integrity. And that's the reason I brought him so that he can bless my sons and daughters. And once again, as we stand up on our feet, put our two hands as we make welcome Apostle Joshua Talena as he comes to bless us. Sir, so thank you. wherever you are, just give him the glory. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Without instrument, you are him to do. I, as a man that keeps insisting, I must come, I must come, I must come here. He kept putting pressure on me and walking. finally met seven mm. Mm. Isaiah 45 verse 1 are you there
I would like a vociferous reader to read verse 1 to 6. And then I will, and then all of us will read verse 7 together. Any vociferous reader, rise and read for me. Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 6, a vociferous reader. Thank you. Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 6. Yes. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue nations before him. To subdue nations before him. And to strip kings of the armor. And to loose the lungs of kings. To open doors before him. To open doors before him. So that gates will not be shut. So that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you. I will go before you. If the Bible is not a borrowed one, underline, I will go before you. Mm. And I will level the mountains. And I will what? L level the mountains. I will level every mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze. I will cut us. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. And cut through the bars of iron. I will cut in asunder the bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Riches stored in secret places. Hidden riches of secret places. So that you may know. That you may know. That I am the Lord. I am the Lord. The God of Israel. The God of Israel. Who summons you by name. Who called you by name. For the sake of Jacob, for my the servant, sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name. I have called you by name, and I bestow on you a title of honor. I have restored on you the title of honor. Though you did not acknowledge me, hey, though thou hast not known me, if that Bible is not a borrowed one, underline though thou hast not known me. Continue. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And there is no other. Beside me there is no other. Apart from me there is no God. Apart from me there is no God. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. Though you have not acknowledged me. Though you have not known me. On the line again. Though thou hast not known me. So from the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. To the place of its setting. So it's going down. People may know there is none besides me. People may know that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And there is no other. Nobody else. There's, let's read verse 7 together. Want to go? I form the, the light and, and I create darkness. darkness. I, I make peace and I create evil. evil. I, the Lord, do, do all, all these, these things. things. Lift up your hands and say, Lord. Lord. For the remaining months of this year, for the remaining months of this year, go before me. Go before me. Say louder, Lord. Lord, go before me. Go before me. Say Lord. Lord, go before me. Go before me. Say Lord. Lord, for the remaining part of this month of this year, for the remaining part of this year, go before me. Go before me. Thank you, Jesus. This. Scripture is written as a result. Isaiah 45 was written as a result of the romance that exists between God and Israel. This romance was so strong that God called their father from the land of Mesopotamia, the land of the hidden. Abraham was a worshiper of the sun and the moon. God saw his commitment and doggedness in idolatry. God said, I like this guy. He didn't need to do anything. God came to him and said, I just like you. I want to bless you. Leave whatever you are doing and come and serve me. And I will make you a great nation. On the ticket of the blessing, he departed. And uh, came to Canaan and God prospered him. He began to enlarge and began to multiply. God began to speak to him that his, son, his, son, his sons and daughters, his children are going to be like the sun in the sea wives and their children into captivity, render their women widows and the children fatherless. And in the, in, the, in the state of their captivity, they will cry to God again, Lord have mercy upon me, have mercy upon us. And the Lord will hear from heaven. He will send them a deliverer. The deliverer will come, liberate them from the hands of their captor, kill their captor, and then bring them to the land of their promise. 
and they will settle down and prosper. Not too long again, they will forget God and begin to serve other gods. God will get angry and send them a captor. He will come in, a, a tyrant. He will invade their land, take them into captivity, kill their mighty men of war, render their women widows and their children fatherless, take them into bondage, and they will remain in captivity for a period of time. They will start crying to God for mercy. And God will hear from heaven and send them a deliverer. The deliverer will deliver them from the hand of their captor. And the deliverer will kill their captor and spoil that nation and bring them back to their land of promise. They will settle down and begin to prosper. When they prosper, they will forget God again. And the cycle continue endlessly from the time when they got into Egypt into the promised land, time of Jephthah to time of Samson, time of Deborah to the time of Samuel, time of David, Samuel, uh, time of uh, Solomon to the time of Rehoboam to the time of Hezekiah endlessly like that, they kept going into captivity and coming out, whenever they repent, God brings them out whenever they sin, God takes them into captivity it was in one of those cycles of captivity that when Israel sinned against God, God got angry and sent them a tyrant called Nebuchadnezzar. When Nebuchadnezzar entered the land of Israel, he killed their mighty men of war. He entered the temple of Solomon that was built for 30 trillion dollars worth of gold. He set the temple of Solomon on fire. He uprooted the pillars in God's house that were made of gold, sapphire, aquamarines. Uprooted them scattered away with treasures that were more than 10 trillion dollars that were kept in the house of God. He pulled down the walls of Jerusalem, set them on fire, took the king of Judah, plugged his two eyes, kept him in prison for 37 years, carried their men into Babylon, into bondage and into captivity. And they were there for several years. Babylon is surrounded that me to live gate. Six fingers, next time they join their hands, you have, you will take your seat. Go pick myopic enemies. Inconsequential. Before Lekbashos, windy, wimpy army that looks vulnerable. But the difference was that there is a God behind them. Well, Bethesda kept his sword. Cyrus said, you are under attack. The moment Bethesda saw the reality, there was a ghetto every king wear, a symbol of the authority. It's called the loins of kings. The ghetto loosed, fell in the ground because God said to Cyrus, I will lose the loins of kings. I will lose it, not you. Cyrus didn't need to remove it. It failed. When Bethesda saw that the lungs failed, Bethesda slumped and died. Out of heart attack. Not that Cyrus killed him. God killed him himself. All Cyrus did was to harvest his head. That's all. And they blew the trumpet. And a kingdom was overthrown. Imagine Niger going to fight America. That is what I am talking about. Niger going to fight America and become the world superpower. It got to be God. Why all this? Because of a people that were remembered. Because of a people. When God goes before you, the most mighty man becomes chicken before you. When they blew the trumpet, Cyrus looked at Dairos. He said, I'm going for the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches, the money. He went there and cut it away. He told Dairos, I'm not ready to be here in Babylon. I don't like the kingdom. I'm going back to Shusha. Cyrus as Susos. Going back to Susa to reign there. Dairos said, I like this throne. I want to sit here. I said, take over. Be ruled from Babylon, but for me, I'm going back home. And then he called Ezra and said, your God appeared to me. Where are your priests? Ezra the leader appeared. He said, your God appeared to me. 
He told me to set you people free. Where are the Jews? They said, we are here. He said, you are going back to your land tomorrow. He said to Ezra, how much do you need to build the temple of Solomon? He said, nothing less than $3 trillion. Cyrus produced $3 trillion on the spot. Hand it over to Ezra. Build the temple of your God. He called Nehemiah, gave him $1 trillion worth of gold. He said, build the walls of Jerusalem. They slept as sleep. Woke up the next morning as liberated people because a God said I will go before you I don't care your condition I don't care where life kept you I don't care what you are going through all you need is one God to go before you and I prophesy to somebody what you couldn't see in the last 10 years in the last 15 years in the last 20 years between now and December 15, your hand will carry it. Your hand will carry it. Your hand will carry it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Somebody shout, I receive. Take your seat. 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 He gave them. And history said. Ezra gave every Jew. 17,000 pounds. Each. Say go back. Build your houses. Dwell in. Your God sent me. To liberate you people. And non believer who knew no God because the people were suffering he revealed himself to a sinner empowered the sinner to release the wealth of the nations and hand it over to the people of God I came to announce to somebody wicked people are about to hand over wealth wicked people are about to hand over businesses people are about to hand over their minds they are diamond mines. They are gold mines. They are oil resources. They are about to hand over to you. They are about to hand over to you. They are about to hand over to you. Take your seat. Take your seat. Why did God set them free? Because of his temple. His tabernacle. When Cyrus liberated them. Cyrus did not lose the sense that God sent him this far for his temple, for his people, for the walls of Jerusalem. God told me, Holy Ghost Embassy, you're about to enter another seasons of your life. God is about to connect you to strange wealths. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Strange wealth. Strange wealth. Hear this. You are going to stumble on money. Those monies are not for you to marry many wives. Those monies are not for you to use it to fight your pastor. Those money are not for you to be arrogant. Those monies is for the house of God. Last year, March, I was in Pretoria to preach. And I picked a lady. I said, you, stand up. I see you on the covens of San Goma. I call three spirits, altars I saw. I said, you were reported. I said, I see a judge wig on your head. She said, she's a magistrate. She's a judge. The judge clapped. I said, come out. She came. She stood before me. I said, listen. You ran from a case because witches started pursuing you. Because of a case that the whole South Africa heard about. You judged a man and jailed him. And they are coming for your life. You abandoned your case. Now you are poor. This is three years. No, you can't feed. She said, yes, sir. I said, kneel down. I said, from today, those spirits that appear in your house disappears. And I carry oil. I said, God is going to make you a millionaire. 
I see your uncle sitting on your father's wealth. They are going to release your father's money. And South African government is going to pay you some money. You are going to be wealthy, but don't forget where you left. The lady has said yes, and I left. Today, I called the pastor. I said, I've not seen my son, and I've been in this country. So I called him. I said, Pastor, where you? He said, fine. I said, I've been in town for almost a week. He said, Papa, why did you do this to me? I said, you mean you didn't know I was coming? He said, no. I said, oh my God. So we started greeting. We started talking. I said, aha. What about that lady I prophesied on? As she entered her money, he said, my God. He said, I fear you, sir. I said, how? He said, number one. South Africa gave her, government gave her 20 million rands. Her father's money was in a life saving. What do you call it? Life Life insurance. Her father's life insurance was 30 million. Her father has three filling stations that the uncles take. They recover it all. This girl sat on that money. The first thing she did was to stop coming to church. He said, I kept asking her of her time. She said, I love money too much. So she left the church because I asked her to honor what you, prophet of God, said to her on the altar. The next thing, this guy was drinking wine, going to clubs. This lady was now, they would be carrying her drunk from club to club. That's all she does with her money. Her younger ones wanted their share. She refused to give them of their father's share of that 30 million. She still sat on it. The younger ones called the pastor and said, tell, that, because we heard that she listens to you, she comes to your church. The pastor said, she has stopped coming for three months now. So I don't know what to do for you guys. Say, tell her what you will meet, you may not like it. The stepbrothers also rose to cut the long story short. This, this, she got that money October. I prophesied in March. She got it October. I follow what I'm saying here. And this year, March, she continued with her lawlessness. She came back from one of those her outings. She shouted, My heart, my heart, and she died. They buried her. The younger ones have collected all the wealth. Why did she die? When they say she died, I put my hand on my head. I say wasted life. Wasted existence. Useless life. How can you get this kind of prophecy? How can God appear to you through a man of God? And speak some definite things to your life. And yet you will not adhere to them. The Bible says, he that is of to reproof and hardeneth his heart shall be destroyed without mercy. For the tender mercy of the wicked is cruelty. It does not take God anything to change you. It does not take God anything to bless you. It does not take God anything to move you from a papania to a millionaire. But the heart of man, the heart of man is desperately wicked and no man can understand it. The same people pastor prays. The moment they make money. They are the one now running the pastor down. Our Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Was preaching under anointing. He said the Holy Ghost is upon me. He looked at that brother and said you come here. The Lord opened my eyes. And showed me that you are going to be a millionaire not too long from now. Empty a bottle of oil on him. The guy fell on the ground. He said stand up. He said, this riches is coming on your life. He said, amen. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Not too long. A month after, Ghanaian government said, they don't want foreigners anymore in their country. Because the foreigners have taken their businesses. Every foreigner should leave Ghana for the next one year. Ghanaians want to know what's happening to their government, their, to their nation first. And foreigners started leaving. All people who had all kinds of companies, Began to look for stations. Began to look for faithful people to hand over. And some people recommend this brother. And they, uh, they gave him five filling stations. And they gave him other shopping um, uh, 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 malls to, 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 to manage. And they left the country. This brother entered wealth. He brought his tithe. He brought his tithe of about $500,000 equivalent. And Duncan collected the money. He said, the Holy Ghost told him that that is not all. He said, bros, the Lord said, that is not all. Next time, be faithful to God. Kneel down, let me pray. Because God said he's going to commit millions to your hands and you've got to be careful. 
He said, yes, sir. He laid hands on him. This brother went behind and gathered elders. He said, look at this stupid pastor. Who in this church has given him half a million? I gave him half a million. He's insulting me, calling me this. So the elders went and met pastor. Pastor, is it true? That his brother gave you half a million and you are still complaining. Pastor said, is that what he told you? He said, yes. He said, okay, no answer. No question. Nothing to say. Sunday morning, Duncan Williams stood on the altar. He pulled out his shoe. He said, if I am a man of God, the same prophecy that made this brother a millionaire, I command him to come down and beg at the church gates to feed. I command him to beg if he could attack me with the anointing I carry because I am correcting him for what is wrong. Let him beg at the church gates. Three months after, Ghanaian government lift the bag and ask the foreigners to come back. They came back to take their, their this, this brother has mismanaged their money from one court case to another. First of all, they freeze his account. The next thing they did was everybody collected his properties. The ones houses he bought for himself, they all confiscated it. The economy, the finance uh, uh, department of the nation that deals with uh, crime and all of this dubious means seized everything. Before you know, they put him in prison for two weeks. After that, he came out. In, in fulfillment of the prophecy of the man of God, he was at the gate waiting for a brother after service to beg him for money to eat. The brother came. He said, please, I need to eat. I just came out of the prison. I need some money so that I could eat. The brother said, go and beg the man of God first before I give you any money. And so he kept begging. The man of God said, you will remain in this condition for seven years. Nebuchadnezzar becoming a minister of agriculture and ate grass for seven years was not, was not a coincidence. It was a response to the prayer of some dangerous men of God. In Daniel chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible said the watcher stood up and said, let his heart be torn from the heart of a man. Let the heart of a beast be given to him. He said, let seven years rest on his head. They prayed. The Bible said, for these are the decrees of the watchers to the intent that the, that the living may know that the most high rule it in the kingdom of men. If what I'm saying is a lie, read Daniel 4, 16 on your own when you get home. So, Nebuchadnezzar did not become an animal because God made him an animal. He became an animal in response to the prophetic declarations of watchers. Who are watchers? Men who are given the gate of a city. Men who control the city in the spirit realm. Were the one that made him a minister of agriculture and sent him to the school of husbandry and animal science for seven years to eat grass. What am I saying? One of the things that destroys prophecy, that destroys your future, is gossip, rumor, speaking against your man of God with no respect. You won't go far. Even if you are prospering, you will go down. That you are making it a running prophet, men of God down. <laughs> Does not mean you are prospering. No. Sir, the man who fall from 10 story building and the one that fall from one story building is not the same fall. Their impact are not the same. That you are climbing doesn't mean that you will fall because your own fall will be disastrous. Better I fall when a little lower than the ground than to fall from that height. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. Bible says money is uncertain. It develops wings and flies. Many years, Zuma was celebrated. Today, he hated. Men have a way of turning their hearts towards people. One thing I want to ask you never to do is to find yourself in a position where you criticize your man of God. Where you run down your prophet. Don't ever. Don't ever. The moment they start, excuse yourself. They say, look, you should give them. It's called the not look. The not wind look. It's a look of disdain and disrespect for whatever they are saying. And walk away. Why? Because you will not share in their, in their, in their, in their harvest when God begins to rain evil upon them. And you follow what I'm saying here? The most dangerous place to be and not know why you are there is a prophetic church. We are prophecies raining and falling. 
so much power. HIV being healed, oppressed being delivered. You come under that kind of atmosphere, be careful. How he treats his wife, whether he loves him, it's not your business. Whether the wife cooks for him well or not, it's not your business. You have no right to look at your father's nakedness. This is Moses fighting. Bible says, as Moses lifted up his hand, your prophet is your Moses. Lifting his hand to the heavens and Joshua prevailed in the valley. You are Aaron, you are all. Lift my hands. They are lifting my hands. As long as my hands are lifted, the people of God prevail. Hear me? You that is prevailing there may not know what's happening to me here. Only these people close. Man of God, the most dangerous people are people close to you. And you, the moment you decide to be close to your man of God, make up your mind that till you die, there are things that must not come out of your mouth. Because as you are lifting the man of God's hand, you will see his armpit. Where is the most smelly place of a man's body? Apart from the anus. Where again? The armpit. Whether the man of God clean his armpit or not, nobody knows. Only these guys. If my armpit is smelling, only you know. Only you know. If I wash this armpit, only you know. Whether I put the other on or not, only you know. Your job is to lift my hand, not to describe my armpit. As you lift my hands, I will be causing people to prevail, causing the sick to be healed, bringing deliverance to the nations. God gave you the privilege to see my armpits. It is not for you to describe it. Not for you to go outside and say, hey, if you see how pastor armpit is smelling, if you see how mama is looking, if you see the way they are fighting, if you see the way they are quarreling, if you see the, hey, be careful. And anyone close to pastor that tells you anything about your pastor, run from that one. Is Judas Iscariot. He is not ordained by God to describe your father's nakedness. Hear this, sir. Take your God bless you. Clap for them. As you get close by privilege, you will see my humanity and not my divinity. My humanity. You know when I am tired, when I am stretched. You know when I'm weak. You know when I need help. But you don't have the right. You are not being given the scriptural mandate to describe it. The Bible said there is no priest taken among men that is without infirmity. There is no priest taken among men that is not without infirmity. That is to say every priest has an infirmity. But the, the difference is that some priests did not work on their infirmity. So their infirmity swallowed their strength. Men while other priests walked on their infirmity, so they minimized their limitation. They minimized their error and amplified their arrow. And so, people see more of their arrow than their error. All the big men in South Africa you celebrate called great prophets. They all have their armpit. Only God knows whether they cut their hair in the armpit or not. Whether they have washed the armpit for five days or not. Whether their armpit has been like this for one year. Only God knows. And you that is close. What is my job? Is to protect him. God did not send me to describe his armpit. He sent me to lift his hands. And as I lift his hands. People will be prevailing. People will be prevailing. People will be prevailing. Destinies will be changing. People's life will be changing. Our church will be growing will be prospering as the man of God hand is lifted. Don't bring down his hands. There are people now that I have traveled, I carry them in my heart to South Africa. I'm praying for them every day. There are people that if another wall is to start and I'm about to pastor, I will not want to pastor them. Because they brought pain and regret and disaster to my work. Church, I ask you today, are you a pillar or a caterpillar? Are you an inspiration or you are a disaster? To what extent have you helped the vision to move forward? Cyrus! Thou art my anointed. It 
case you don't know Cyrus, I formed the light and I formed the darkness. I created them. What God was saying to Cyrus, I both the good and the bad, I created. What he meant is, evil Satan is my servant, Cyrus. Evil Satan. Do you know why God has not destroyed Satan till today? It's because Satan still hears the voice of God. The Bible says he trembles at the word of God. Evil, there are people that are worse than Satan. If Satan were to be in your church, there are things you will never see. Satan, he will never see. Because he respects hierarchies and authority. I'm telling you, Satan, they respect hierarchy and authority. The other they say, come out. They say, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. That means we cannot talk about them anyhow. But you, define your identity before we get angry. And you follow what I'm saying here? The demons, we are telling them, Paul is a no-go area. Jesus is a no-go area. But there are many of you, you are worse than Satan. The way you operate, it appears as if it is Satan, that it is you that employs Satan. You know, there are people who lie, their lie is worse than Satan. They, when they lie, even Satan will open his mouth and say, ha, ah, this is not how we planned it to. <laughs> there is a way they lie. Even Satan will open his mouth. Bros, <laughs> this is not how we planned it to. How come you went beyond bars? They are satanically inspired. He said, that was a Lucifer, son of the morning, until the day iniquity was found in thee. Where was iniquity? That he finds his way into him. Where was iniquity? Where was iniquity? Many, many people are in the church, but they are Judas Iscariots. A woman brought perfume and cast at the feet of Jesus. She broke the pastor bones. A, a Judas said, the poor are there. Very expensive. Poor people are suffering. Our pastor is driving good car. People are suffering. Our pastor is changing clothes and changing house. That is a Judas spirit. Jesus said, leave her alone. The poor are with you always. No matter how much we give people, poor people will never cease in the land. Because poverty is not a cause. It's a mentality. Are you following what I'm saying here? Poverty is not brought by God. It's mentality of people that invite poverty. And it's how they talk, they remain poor. Even God can't help them. So what must be done, must be done. Jesus said, leave her alone. For she prepares for my burial. She will cast the oil, the perfume on me. She's not wasting it. Anything you make out of this man of God, he's like a cow that must produce milk that you must drink. No matter how much you feed a cow, he must bring out milk. Pastors can never be a liability. They are like cows, no matter what you give them. If you like, give them gold, shoe of gold. Give them crown of gold. Give them cow of gold. They are cows that must produce milk. They must produce for you milk that you can drink and give and sell and multiply. They are never dry. And they can never outlast their usefulness. Too useful. They make you better. They protect you. And the more your pastor prosper, the more you prosper. Don't fight the prosperity of your pastor. Because the more he prosper, the more you prosper. If you have aircraft, you will have aircrafts. If you own houses, you will own houses. If you drive good car, you drive good car. Like the priests, like the people. Don't be envious and don't fight greatness. Cyrus, I am giving you wealth that you will build my house. You will build my walls. You will give the Jews money and help them. God, eh, all this he says, I will go before you. All I want is take the risk. And he took the risk. And the wealth was before him. But he never forgot the God who met him and instructed him. Many of you forget too soon what God has done for you. Many of you, the reason why despite all our prayers, God has not blessed you because he knows your heart. You are too wicked to be blessed. He knows your heart. Don't say amen, my dear. That is not a good prayer. I'm just telling you something. You are too wicked in heart. So God allow your poverty to be your judgment. 
Because there are people that their own hellfire have started now. Hell is burning. When life is hot for you, your hell has started. Even though South Africa is cold. But your head is under pressure. Rent you can't pay. Children's school fees you can't pay. You're under pressure. Good anointing. Good word. Mighty prophecy. Sick being healed. Deaf ears open. Diabetes disappear. Yet you are having crippled pockets. Why? Is God unfair? Check your heart. The Lord does not look at the outward appearance. The Lord look at the hearts. Please let our heart be right. It does not take God anything. I feel like crying, you know why? If these people know where you and this ministry will be five years from now, they will give everything, if possible, work naked. Because of where they are going. You people have not scratched one quarter of all you are capable of achieving. Hear me, already rebellion has started in some of your hearts. Don't follow people who attack and criticize the man of God. Especially those ones who seems to be very close, who are around him, who sleep in his house, who live around his house, who live around him, who live around the office, who are seeing him daily. Don't let them take your honor that you have for the oil. You don't know God though. The God you can see is this man. That's true. I am the God my people see. I am their prophet. I am their prophet. They must protect me. Because my death is the death of their destiny. Oh my God. Let me conclude with this. I can go on. Oh. I was giving only 30 minutes to talk. Just to bless you and then we go rest. So that tomorrow I'll be in the aircraft and go home. I'll be back sometime. When you are ready for me, I'll be ready. Now listen. God said Israel would be in captivity for 400 years. After that, he will liberate them. 400 years came. 10 years before 400 years, God has sent them a deliverer. But the Bible said they understood not how that God will deliver them. They did not understand. Moses saw an Egyptian maltreating Israel. He killed the Egyptian and buried him. The next day he shot to Israelite fighting. He said, you are brothers. Why are you fighting? That one looked at him and said, who made you a judge? Who made you a prophet over us? I, you think you will kill me like you killed the Egyptian? Pharaoh must hear this. Pharaoh must hear this. Pharaoh must hear this. He proceeded to tell Pharaoh. The Bible said Moses ran. He ran for 40 years. Moses was in the wilderness. 30 years added to their prophetic words. They were still crying. God said, I send you your deliverer since. Somebody open uh, Acts chapter 7 and verse 25. Read it for me. Acts 7, 25. I have sent you your deliverer since. But you drove your deliverance. You disrespected your deliverer. You did not honor your deliverer. You are asking me now to liberate you. Anytime I am come down, it's a showing forth of a man. The coming down of God is the appearance of a prophet. Any day God answers you, there will be the appearance of a human messenger. Any day God hears your prayer, there will be what? An appearance of a human messenger. What did he say, sir? Acts 7, uh, verse 25. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand. Stop there. For he supposing thought that his brothers will understand that God has sent him to deliver them by his hand. What happens, sir? But they did not understand. But they did not understand. They did not understand. They did not understand. So 40 years affliction came on them. After 430 years, they were crying. God, set us free. God, prosper me. God, lift me. Lord, release my husband. He's inside D.D. Isaac. Your anointing. God will never give you any anointing. The anointing is inside him. God, your prosperity is here. There is no prosperity anywhere for you. That inside this man. If you despise this thing, your prosperity hangs. So when they cry, God say, Oh, you want deliverance? I've sent you your prophecies. You, are, you say, no, okay, let me go and check whether the man is still alive. Because if the man is dead, you are finished. Let me find out. He went and met the man in the bush. The man who was a mighty man in words became a stammerer. 
what came on Moses that had eloquence. What happened to him? 40 years after, he could not speak well. He was a stammerer. The Lord met him. Pull out your shoe. Where you're standing is a holy ground. Moses, uh, 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 Lord, I want to use you. Uh, uh, how? Go and tell Pharaoh to, to let my people go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Will I say he, he sent me? <laughs> I cannot speak. God said, Herod will be your prophet. I bring Herod. He will talk for you. God, he said, but I'm a stammerer. God said, I like you like that. The way you are stammering, you will just go straight to the point. You will be talking around. <laughs> You'll be talking around the bush. You will go straight to the point. <laughs> they gave Bibles to people to go and sell. 50 Bibles. That when you sell it, they'll give you the money of five Bibles as free. So, you, normal people went to sell. They couldn't sell. One time around the church, Pastor, give it to me. I will, I will go and sell. So, he went one hour after he came back, he collected another 50. He sold one hour after. Pastor said, what were you telling them? He said, I will just knock on the door. I said, B -b -b buy the Bible or, 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 or I read it for you. <laughs> Are you buying it? I started it. John, 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 John. Bring the Bible, my friend. Take your money. <laughs> That is how he was selling the Bible. Nobody wants, wants to hear the stamina. When will you finish reading the Bible? When even the book of John takes you one minute to mention John. What am I trying to say? God had to apprehend this man, walked on him, begged him. How do I know God begged Moses? Do you know that after the burning bush encounter in chapter 3 of Exodus, the following day Moses refused to go. The Bible says, and the Lord found him and sought to kill him. So Moses said, these people that pursue me, me, I, I, I'm not going. <laughs> God said, Moses, after God had already negotiated with him in chapter 3, he, I, I'm a Sarah, he's, I, I, I'm a Stamara. I said, Heron will be your prophet. Who, 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 who will I say? He said, take a rod, take your rod. Go, go, go. Uh, 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 I'm not sure. God said, don't worry. I will help you. Don't worry. Uh, when are we going? He said, tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, okay. The next day Moses carried his animals was going. Read for me Exodus 4.24. Carried his animals. <laughs> he was going. God appeared. Moses, Moses. Uh, oh God. Where are you going? M my business. Which business? You are supposed to go to Egypt. Is he by force? <laughs> I am not going. <laughs> what did the Bible said? Exodus 4.24. Yes. And it came to pass on the way. On the way. At the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. The Lord met Moses and sought to kill Moses. Go ahead. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone. When Zipporah saw that God was going to kill her husband, Zipporah was his wife. When she saw that God was going to kill her husband, she said to herself, what will I do to stop God? There is only one thing you can do to stop God and stop Satan. When your battles become fierce, the only thing God fears and respects, the only thing Satan respects is blood. Sacrifice. Anytime you are tired of praying, take a sacrifice. Because anytime you put money on the altar, God does not see your money, he sees your blood. Because money is the only thing that could be equivalent to your blood. That is why you walk and use your blood for 30 days. After that, they give you money equivalent for your sweat. Because your sweat is a byproduct of your blood. After When your blood walks, it turns to sweat. Am I talking to somebody here? So any time you give a money that is not convenient, God does not see your money. He sees your blood. And blood... Invite spirits into your battles. I leave that for another day. 
to conclude, the Bible says Zipporah, his wife, saw that God wanted to kill him. She said, what can I do to stop God? Blood. She looked for blood. No blood anywhere. Animal. The animals have gone into the bush. She saw her son. She grabbed him, pulled down his trouser, held his private part, used a sharp stone, cut the foreskin of his, of his private part. Blood started gushing out. She carried the skin and the blood slapped the husband. When God saw blood on the face of Moses, the Bible said, and the Lord left him. And the Lord left him. And Moses said to God, ah, ah, we go. Thank you for setting me free. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for liberating me. When are we going? <laughs> God said, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Why was the prophet discouraged? Why the prophet almost wanted to lose his life by disobeying God because the people he was sent to did not value him. The most deadly thing you will do is to despise this man that God has called. And the best way to honor him is to honor his wife. You cannot separate both of them. When you honor his wife, you have honored him. And when you honor him, you have honored God. And God will bless you. He will lift you. I feel like anointing every hands of this disciple. God told me, well, the mummies are going to come into your hands. My eye has opened. I saw businesses. I saw them breaking forth. This man, I had a two-hour revelation about you. That man there, you. Yes, that man, that last, yes. Come here, yes. No, 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 sir. You, sir. You, sir, yes. Come, sir. I had a... Can I put permission? I, I hope my dressing is looking okay. I hope. <laughs> Pull your suits. I had hours. I saw you giving money millions of rounds. You may look poor. You may look like you don't have. But there are strange monies that will enter your life. As I put this garment on you, I release you. I saw three hours revelation. This man did not make me sleep. I only slept 4.30 a.m. this man. I was asking God, who is this man? Why are you showing him throughout in my dream? Take. Prosper. 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 I'm going to be praying on your hands that God is going to lift you. He's going to prosper you. He's going to enlarge your coast. He will give you beyond your salary. But don't forget. It's because of this man and the work. I see people buying properties. In millions of, in millions of rands. I see filling stations. I see hotels. I see diamond, uh, my, I see diamond uh, factory. Factory. Where they refine gold. Refine diamonds. I see blessing. I see police station. I see all manner of things. I see... S streets, S streets. I see S streets. I see some of you flying your private aircrafts. Fly your private aircrafts. This man, you will rise. I saw an oil resting on you. Lift up your hands, say, My father, my father. My father, my father. If you are looking for anyone looking to bless, anyone. here am I. Here bless I. me. Bless I vow whatever I you will make out of me. I will return it to you. Use me. I am available. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Rabba kapo se telebus. Sheko talabre adalagados. Mambro se kapa. Sheko tabaradas. Eloko tabaragadas. Labrodos kapri adalabrayas. Sheko talabra adalabas. I see this young man. Hey. You say nothing is working. But after today, it will begin to work. It will begin to work. It will begin to work. God said you are not close for nothing. I saw your hand inside a 
a massive company. I see wealth and honor. What is of my life? Take it in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Please get us oil. I'll be touching your two hands. You will meet your prophet. He will touch your two hands. You will go back to your seat and lay it on your head. And pray and tell God the kind of amount you want. The kind of company you want to have. Because all of you civil servants, you will own your own companies. Begin to think outside being a civil servant. Start thinking outside being a civil servant. Begin to ask God to give you ideas. Ideas and concepts. How to make money. How to succeed. Am I talking to somebody here? Lift up your hands as I pray. Between now and Sunday. Please. Take a sacrifice on your own. Something that will cost you. Something. Write it. Put it in an envelope. Say my sacrifice. My blood on his altar. My sacrifice. My blood on his altar. My sacrifice. My blood on his altar. Put it in an envelope. Whatever God lays in your heart. Tell God. If, 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 if it is only one person you want to bless. In this ministry. Let me be that person. I don't know if that person is here. Be, be sincere from your heart. Because God told me, as soon as I leave Holy Ghost Embassy, this church will erupt. It will erupt in blessings. Erupt in prosperity. Erupt in favor. Am I talking to somebody here? I will touch your hands. You will go to him. He will touch your hands. You will go to your seat. You will pray. You will anoint your head. Tell God the kind of money you want. Tell God the kind of to give you ideas. Tell God to take this thing up to the altar. Up to the altar. Tell God to give you insight. Tell God to give you revelation. After you are finished praying, take an offering, a seed. Go to the altar and kneel down and drop the seed and tell God how much you love him. Like Solomon. Everybody, you will do that until we are done. Shekote, come sir. Where are the backups? Where that young man? Come and begin to sing for me quickly. No, no, sir. This way, sir. This way, sir. How we do? Nobody comes to the prophet. You come to me first. Come to me first. Until I touch you, the prophet must not touch you. Go back and come to me first before you meet the prophet. If I do not touch your hand, don't see the prophet. Immediately he will lay hands on your head as your father. I will touch your hand for money to enter your life. Please keep singing. Keep singing. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God You know we see how great How great is our God hey. Hey. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. He trembles at his voice, he trembles at his voice. How great! Oh, we see. 
and begin to worship. If you have not dropped your seed, your offering, take that offering to the altar and kneel down and worship him. Take that offering to the altar, kneel down and worship him. Worship him. Any part of the altar. Any part of the altar. Kneel down and worship. Take your offering to the altar. Kneel down and worship him. Spend only 30 seconds and stand up. You have 30 seconds only. Stand. 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 Those in charge of the offering move around quickly and pick the envelopes. Stand and worship. Lebro seca parata satos. Nembro se klanda gabo zuprododos. Jeko teka ekros soprodos kapreadas. Worship him, give him the glory. Merabo su kalabaragadas. Jeko de gabaradas. Pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are, just pray in the spirit. Begin to call the money, call your breakthrough into reality. Call your favors, call your promotion, call your money, call your testimony into reality. Speak into the atmosphere. Call it forth, call it forth. Lembro se cabas, yala bako se talabrada la bos, yele manando la bos, sida la barada da 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 da. Nembo rondo la barada la baradia, yele manda la barada da bos, sida da 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 da. Glory to God. Lift your hands, worship Him wherever you are. Worship Him, thank Him. Forever. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him. With your voice lifted up. We give glory to. La rusha balia is zopali. Glory to God. Zombra hadovi ila. Glory to God. Zoko prono vehene mi ila. Lift your hands, worship him, worship him, worship him. We give glory to God. Marosha balia ikaratosh. Glory to God. Jambro tovaleli asuga balali. Glory to God forever. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands. Just worship him. Give him praise. Give him glory. 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 We give glory to you, Lord. We give glory to you, Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on. Come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Give him glory, give him glory. Give him glory. There is nobody like you, Lord. We say we are grateful to you. Mighty God, we worship your name. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, we exalt 
thank you, Lord. Can we give you glory? Lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands. Can everyone leave the seat? Leave your seat. Come on the altar. Apostle, just come over here, sir. Everyone. Remove this. Remove this. Lift up your hands, all of you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands higher. Listen. God is a covenant keeping God. I repeat again. I said God is a covenant keeping God. When he says he will bless you. Surely he will bless you. On this altar of mine. Tonight. I declare a prophetic blessing over your life. I don't love the way you are shouting. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Paradu salia barakatos o kovehene. I receive. Seven people hearing the sound of my voice. I receive. I open international doors for you. I receive. In the name of Jesus. I receive. Where you could not go, may you go. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive. The money you could not touch, may you touch. I receive. Via this apostolic and prophetic grace. I receive. Receive your heart is I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive. In the name of Jesus. I receive. I give you the keys of prosperity. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. 24 people hearing the sound of my voice. I receive. Your color shall change. I receive. Your business is changing. I receive. Your marriage is changing. I receive. Your ministry is changing. I receive. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Listen, 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 listen. I see angels. Amen. I see angels. Amen. And these angels. They are angels of finances. I receive it. I don't love the way you are receiving. I receive. They are angels of finance. Like you, you are sick. You are sick. You are sick. There's something in your blood. Huh? Something in your blood. Okay? Huh? Now, listen to me. As I'll be declaring, there will be angels of healing. I receive. You're already healed. You're negative now. I receive it. Have you heard me? I receive it. Oh. You are negative. I receive it. Your blood is clean. I saw an angel coming from heaven and I he removed it. the contaminated blood. I receive And he had to put new blood inside your body. I receive it. And the Lord says you are negative. I receive Go it. Go and do test tomorrow. They'll tell you you are negative. I receive it. Lift your hand and say, I receive it. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. Via this prophetic and apostolic grace. I receive it. We release you from every cage of the enemy. I receive in the name of Jesus. I receive in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I release your destiny from every satanic harassment. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive in the name of Jesus. I receive your hands will touch money. I receive it. Your hands will touch money. I receive it. You are out to overflow. In the name of Jesus, I receive. Declare, Apostle, declare, declare. I prophesy. Yes, receive it. The wealth of the wicked. Yes, receive it. Let it be handed over to you. I receive it. The glory of South Africa. I receive it. Let it be handed over to you. I receive it. The glory of the diamonds of South Africa. I receive it. The diamonds of the Southern Africa. I receive it. Let it be released into your heart. I it. The gold. I receive it. The mineral resources. I receive it. The oil. I receive it. Of Angola. I receive of it. Of Nigeria. I receive of it. Of Libya. I receive it. Be released into your heart. I receive it. The mineral resources. I receive it. Be released into your heart. I receive it. Contracts. I receive it. Jobs. I receive it. Houses. I receive it. Landed property. I receive it. It now. I receive it. It is yours. I receive it. As you give yourself to serve God, I receive it. Let it be released for you. I receive it. As you honor God in time.
tithes and offerings. I receive it. May it continue to prosper you. I receive it. In the name of the Father. I receive it. Of the Son. I receive it. And of the Holy Spirit. I receive it. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. The angels of God right now, they are going to touch you. You are going to receive the grace. The grace that is upon him, the grace that is upon me. It will come on you, double portion. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. Apostle, just remove your, your, your jacket. Power. Generous. Listen, lift up your hands. We are, look, look. We have never done this. Look. This day, you and your generation, you will live to remember. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. What stopped your generation will not stop you. I receive it. Via the apostolic and prophetic grace. I receive it. We release you from financial cases. I receive it. We release you from marital cases. I receive it. We release you from cases of embarrassment. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't like it. I said this conference, it has been immense in your blood. I receive it. Wherever they denied you, I receive Via the apostolic and prophetic grace, I receive Go and prosper. I receive it. Go and be a billionaire. I receive it. Go and build houses. I receive it. Go and get married. I receive it. Go and receive your promotion. I receive it. Go and receive your salary increment. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. Now, take your offering. Amen. Take your offering now. Hurry up. Take your best offering. Take it now. Your prophetic offering. They need to bless you, sir. They need to bless you. Take your prophetic. You are my son. You are my daughter. Take a prophetic blessing. Hurry up. A heavy one. Bring it here. Bring it here. Hurry up. Take a prophetic offering. Lift it up. All those who are having 500, 1,000, 2,000. Bring it here. Hurry up. You are connecting to this man of God. He has blessed us. He has blessed us. He has blessed us. Run, 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 run. Run. Take your money. Take your money. Hurry up. Take your money. Take your money. Take your money. Can you run? Take your money.